Fisher's proof of the configuration of D glucose. Step 1 Since an aldohexose has 4 chirality centers, in total 2 to the power 4, that means 16 stereoisomers are possible, one of which is the glucose. Fisher arbitrarily decided to limit his attention to the 8 structures with the D configuration of the highest asymmetric carbon. So at first Fisher decided that this highest asymmetric carbon have D configuration. This carbon has the D configuration. Fisher arbitrarily chose that. Now step 2. Arabinose and aldopentose is converted into both glucose and mannose by a Kiliani Fischer synthesis. So Fischer saw that arabinose can be converted into both glucose and mannose by Kiliani Fischer synthesis. From this observation, Fischer deduced that glucose and mannose are epimeric at carbon 2 and that the configuration of arabinose at carbons 2, 3 and 4 is the same as that of glucose and mannose at carbon 3, 4 and 5 respectively. So this configuration of 2, 3 and 4 will be same for the configuration of 3, 4 and 5 in glucose and mannose. Fischer understood that. He was just a genius person. Now step 3. Arabinose can be oxidized by dilute nitric acid to an optically active aldehydic acid. From this observation, Fischer concluded that the OH group at carbon 2 of arabinose must be on the left. If this OH group were on the right, then the aldehydic acid of arabinose would have to be meso and thus optically inactive, regardless of the configuration of the OH group at carbon 3. So what he saw? He saw that the experiment shows that the if you oxidize the arabinose, you are getting an optically active compound. So Fisher understood that this one OH is in the right. So this OH must be in the left. Because if you oxidize this CH2OH and this CHO group will be converted into COOH. Now this OH, if these OH are in the same same side, then you will get a meso compound because this is the plane of the symmetry. That's why you will get a meso compound. But in actual case, you are getting an optically active compound. So Fisher understood that this OH is in the right and this OH is in the left side. Step 4. Oxidations of both glucose and mannose with HNO3 give optically active aldehydic acids. From this observation, Fischer deduced that the OH group at carbon 4 is on the right in both glucose and mannose. So what he has done, he has just oxidized both glucose and mannose. So if you just, one of this is glucose and one of this is mannose. He didn't know at first that which one is the glucose and which one is the mannose. But after oxida oxidation, he got that both are optically active. Both are optically active. So he understood that this 3 position, this 3 OH, not 3 actually, this one is the 4th carbon. This, this one is the attached with the 4th carbon. This OH group is on the right hand side. Because if it were in the left hand side, then in case of the oxidation, this will become a meso compound. So the glucose and mannose, both of them cannot give optically active compound. In this case, if the OHs were on the left, then one will be optically active, another one will not be optically active. But the experiment shows that both of them are optically active. So from this, Fisher deduced that this OH is on the right. Now step 5. 
this one was legendary. Fisher had already developed a method for effectively interchanging the two end groups that means the aldehyde and the primary alcohol of an aldose chain, chain sorry aldose chain and with brilliant logic Fisher realized that glucose will give a new aldohexose due to an interchange of the end groups while mannose would yield the same aldohexose so let me just zoom it zoom in so this is your mannose because if you just interconvert this CH2OH and this CHO group if you just change these two group then you will get the same stru same structure that means same molecule but in case of this glucose if you change this CH2OH and CHO group after interchange you will get a different form different structure which is actually L glucose but in case of mannose both were same before and after exchange of this CH2OH and CHO group by this logic Fisher un understood that which one is the structure of glucose and which one is the structure of mannose the procedure Fisher used for interchanging the ends of the glucose chain began with one of the gamma lactones of d glucaric acid so at first he took this gamma lactone then he reduced it with the sodium amalgam so this is becoming the CH2OH and then this is again forming a gamma aldenone lactone this OH is forming with this carbonyl group so if he reduced this also with sodium amalgam at pH 3 to 5 so this one is also for this one is forming the aldehyde group and at last he got the L glucose structure from the glucose the second reduction with sodium amalgam is carried out at pH 3 to 5 under this condition reduction of the lactone yields an aldehyde and not a primary alcohol so this this is very much important to control this pH of the reaction 